Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC London card from a betting perspective. And for those of you that are not used to this, we take a very contrarian approach. We try to uh, get off of the fighters that everybody seems to be playing. We try to get off of the props that everybody seems to feel are so obvious. The idea being that if everybody thinks something is that obvious, it's probably hopelessly overvalued. So we're going to be trying to fade that. And this is what's worked for us for, for months now. Um, it's what's worked for me for a lifetime when it comes to being contrarian as far as a sports better, a stock picker and things like that. So we are going to get right into it because we have 15 fights to get through. And just once again, we're going to be going over the rules here. Um, the rules are is that we're going to be betting one thing on every fight. And this is not obviously the greatest money management system in the world, but I don't care. We're going to be betting one unit on every fight, which again, is not the greatest money management system in the world, but I don't care. And one unit for me is $180. Uh, 180 times is, is, is 18 times is high times 10. For those of you who are Jewish, you know what I mean. Very good luck. And that's just what I'm going to be doing. Um, the other thing is that since we are probably going to end up going 0-17, or excuse me, 0-14 in the first 14 fights, we're going to be putting something in the 15th fight to try to get all our money back. And those are just the rules. And listen, this is we're going to give you some good EV plays. They're going to be contrarian, but this is for fun. And uh, let's just get it going. First fight of the night, we have Jahil Filo versus Daniel Barres. And one of these, uh, one, I don't want to say system, but one um, one concept that is very prevalent in the recency bias world is that of the fighter who gets too much credit because he lost. Uh, he, he When you overperform in a loss, those types of fighters get, I think, even more of a market overcorrection than those that that actually win. And Jafil Filio, he was like a you know plus one million against uh, Mohammed Makayev, and he ended up uh, almost submitting him, you know, almost, but he ended up getting submitted himself. So I feel as though that this line and the public has been just kind of driving him uh, to this close to pick him here. Um, so we're going to be betting the other side. We're going to be betting Barres. The, we are going to get a little greedy though because we don't just want to get minus one ten. The one thing about the Barres side, I have seen some sharper people go for the Barres side, but what I'm hearing is that his path to victory is going to be that of knockout. So we're going to presume that that is kind of overvalued as well. So what we're going to be playing is Barres by decision, plus 300. Now, it's probably not going to let me put these bets in right now because Zoom really does not like, or DraftKings really does not like Zoom, but we'll put them in kind of at the end. Okay, Shwana... Uh, Shawana Bannon versus Bruno Brazil. Um, okay, so what this is, this is kind of reverse recency bias with an MMA math twist. Okay, so Bruno Brazil was a favorite, a big favorite at, in her debut over Denise Gomes. And normally, I and she got her ass kicked. And normally, what I would say is that is that Bruno Brazil is probably somebody you want to you want to bet this week because people will be all down on her for failing as chalk in, his, in, his, in her last fight. However, the MMA math part of, of, uh, of, of the way MMA betting works is even more powerful. And then what happens is you have Denise Gomes, who beat Bruno Brazil, came back and validated that win by uh, knocking out Yasmin Uruguay as a huge underdog. So what people are saying is, well, Brazil's loss against Gomes can be excused because of this, this, this. Um, so that's going to trump the the Brazil uh, uh, loss bias. So we are going to be taking the Bannon side here. So Bannon, uh, I don't. There's really no one cons one uh, consensus for how this fight would finish or how this fight would go if Bannon won. So we're just going to play her just plus the one thirty. So you Shaw want Shawana Baron Bannon, so plus one thirty for one eighty. Also couldn't hurt that she's Irish <laughs> and the fights. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that because the fights in, in Great Britain uh, is, in, is in London. Actually, people from London might hate, might hate the Irish. So who knows? But I'm not getting involved in that. Uh, so I'll take Shawana Bannon plus the 130 for 180. All right, moving on, we have Chris Duncan versus Yanal Ashmus. Um, I mean, Ashmus is from Israel. 
So I can't really very well bet 180 against somebody from Israel. So we're going to bet 180 against someone from Israel. Um, it doesn't get, the analysis doesn't get any better than that. Uh, it actually does. So, so you have Ashmoos who's coming off of a highlight real knockout, okay, uh, as a big underdog. And these fighters get just steamed in their next fight. And, and especially earlier in the week, um, you know, Ashmoos was everybody's just kind of favorite underdog because, you know, what? why not? He's, he was an underdog before and he came off and he just starts some guy. And so now he's up against Chris Duncan, who who just had a very, very close split decision win. I mean, give me Ashmoos, right? Um, so we're going to go ahead and take Chris Duncan. Um, the And we're going to get a little greedy here as well, because the one thing about the Chris Duncan is that he's been uh, training with America's top team, which is essentially going to be working on his wrestling. And in his last fight, he displayed the wrestling to a very sort of boring decision. And they actually interviewed him and they asked, you know, what's what, you know, what's the deal? Why wouldn't you go for you know something more? And he says, listen, I'm, I'm you know, I lost. I, I, I got to get some wins before I start to open up my game a little bit. Um, so people are presuming he's going to do the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to fade that also. We're going to play Duncan inside the distance. We might even play him by straight KO. Let's take a look and see what this is. So KO, so let's just look at just Duncan inside the distance. Inside the distance is plus 150. Um, if we did it just by KO, you probably don't get that much for a break. It's plus 175. Duncan by submission, plus 900. Now, doesn't that just split the difference? I think that's a great idea. If Duncan really wants to show off, he'll get the takedown and then go to submission. Now, this is like so greedy, isn't it? Aren't we just supposed to play him plus the 175? Excuse me, plus the 150 inside the distance? Probably. So we're just, we're going to do it. We're going to play Chris Duncan by submission for 180. God help us. Uh, that literally has no chance to win. But we're going to do it anyway. Caitlin Vieira versus Penny Kianza. All right, this one's easy for me. So Caitlin Vieira is stronger. She is, is more experienced. She's bigger and she has more power. All that Vieira has is, is well, excuse me, all Kianza has is maybe some volume. And if anything, Vieira could, and if, if things go Vieira's way, she could look like a minus 1,000 favorite. But yet, the line is only minus 150, plus 130 for Kianzad. Give me Kianzad, plus the 130. Let's go. Uh, wait, this is, who's this? Why do I, oh, this is my bonus bet. Oh, hey, look at that. Oh. Wait, why do I not? Why do I have my bonus bet there? I got, I got a bonus bet. Uh, I want no bonus. Yeah. Um. Okay. So Patty Kansad, terrible play. Plus the one thirty for one eighty. Um. All right. Uh. Muhammad Muradov versus uh versus Brian Barberina. So Barberina shouldn't be, shouldn't even be in this weight. Um, Muradov basically has him covered everywhere. It's just a question of whether he knocks him out in the first round or second round. So what we're going to do is we are going to, again, we are going to just, just hope that Barbarina can just survive. He's tough, survived long enough to either lose by decision or in round three. So let's take a look and see what these, uh, and see what these, uh, uh, odds are. So if we did, Murdoch by decision plus 165. Who needs that? Murdoch round three plus a thousand. Let's go. Look at this jump between round two and round three. You can give me that. All right. Moving on, we have uh, Michael Parkin versus Jamal Pogues. So there's a little bit too much steam, I think, on this on this Parkin dude. Uh, they've been all this talk about how he's been training with Tom Aspinall and all these guys and that Pogues had a very boring spot against, uh, against, uh, what's his name? What the hell is his name? 
Parisian, who ends up being this is kind of bad. And Pogues is also more of like a light heavyweight. He's not even big. And Parkin is is the the idea is that the the they, the UFC just knows something about this Parkin guy, and they're bringing him in to get the win in front of his home fa- home fans. No thanks. Uh, we will take Jamal Pogues here, and because he's real boring and he goes for decision, we're going to play Pogues inside the distance. So let's see, winning method. Well, we could play Pogues by submission at plus nine hundred again. Wow. Or just play him inside the distance at plus 215. Wait, Pose goes for takedowns and gets them. He could get a submission, but, you know, let's not get greedy. Let's just play Pogues inside the distance for 180. All right. Um, moving on, Mark D. Casey versus Joel Alvarez. So D. Casey, terrible fight IQ. Dia Casey had should have should have gone for takedowns against Michael Johnson because he's been developing this wrestling this wrestling skill. But the thing is, is that if he goes for them against Joel Alvarez, it's really his worst pass to victory um, because Joel Alvarez is just going to basically submit him. So I really don't see any path to victory for Dia Casey. So we are going to bet it. Mark D. Casey, he's only plus 165. I mean, have a, just how much D. Casey plus, by decision at plus 350? You know what you could do? Oh, my God. Do you, you realize that D. Casey might have better striking? What about D. K, D. Casey by KO? That's only plus 450. Now, we're going to take DKC by decision plus 350. DKC by decision. Wait, where where, where was he? DKC by decision plus 180 for 180. I'll tell you, this is a pretty reasonable, that's pretty low, DKC by KO. Dia Casey by submission plus 1800. There's just no. All right. So Dia Casey by decision for 180. Uh, all right. Moving on. We have Danny Roberts versus Johnny Parsons. Um, Danny Par. Listen, Johnny Parsons is the, is the kind of Muay Thai striking coach, but Danny Parsons is just kind of better everywhere. The only problem is, is that Danny Parsons, excuse me, that, that Danny Roberts has just a really, really bad chin. So if Parsons wins, it's going to be by KO. And if Roberts wins, it's going to be by decision. So those are the two things we can't bet. Uh, we have to play either Roberts by inside the distance or Parsons by decision. So let's just take a look at those various odds. Parsons by decision is plus 600. Wow. Where Roberts inside the distance plus 220. Okay. We're we're doing this. Danny, oh, Danny Roberts by decision. I'm sorry, plus 250. No, no, we wanted Parsons. Parsons by decision is plus 600. Well, we are really going to need to win our money back later because we are really going over this card. But I can't resist this. All right. Um, Davey Grant versus Daniel Marcos. Davey Grant's got that dog in him. Let me tell you something. If you faded all the guys that have those that dog in them, according to, to, to the Twitter sphere, you'd probably make a lot of money. So we're not betting. We're not betting Davey Grant. Daniel Marcos is basically a fraud. Um, he's been fighting just basically essentially nobody. And Davey Grant is just, he's in front of his home crowd. I mean, I don't know how you don't play him. So we're going to take Marcos. Um, and the other thing about Davey Grant, he just doesn't even, just doesn't get finished. And Marcos really doesn't finish anybody. So we're going to take Marcos inside the distance. Marcos. Let's see. Marcos winning method. Uh, that's by TK or submission plus 225 for 180. All right. We have 
Lerone Murphy versus Josh Kulabau. So, Lerone Mo Murphy is, is, the, is probably the superior striker, even though he kind of won a he won a kind of pretty controversial split decision, but but Santos is pretty good, so we can forgive that. Um, the only thing is he's not much of a finisher. So the idea is that Murphy is probably just going to win a, a striking-based decision. So that is stuff that we can't bet. So we can't bet Murphy. We can't bet Murphy by decision, certainly. We could bet Kulabau by decision if we want. Um, but probably the real contrarian play here, if LeMurphy if Murphy is really that much better, is to play Murphy inside the distance. So we're going to do that. Murphy inside the distance. And we're, we're not going to specify how. Although we probably should, right? I mean, he's not getting a submission. So, yeah, but maybe DQ, maybe that. that We should probably include that. Let's see. Just in case. Oh, no, you just get TK or submission plus 350? I mean, he's not getting a freaking submission, right? Yeah, let's just play Leron Mur Murphy by TKO or KO plus one. All right, uh, making some good time here. All right, easy easy pickings. Uh, Faris Ziam versus Jai Herbert. So Faris Ziam came in as a pretty big underdog to uh, Piglack, who was this dude that nobody really had heard of, but he got all this hype. And Faris Ziam was basically thrown to the wolves, and Faris Ziam just, just owned him pretty much. He kind of like developed a wrestling game kind of out of nowhere and it won a very, very easy, easy decision. And now he's always he's like a minus 165 favorite over like an actual, actual opponent. Um, so we're, we're going to, we're going to take Jai Herbert here. Uh, I just don't see anybody playing him. So we're going to do it. So Jai Herbert plus 140. We don't we, I don't know how he's gonna finish it or whatever. So Jai Herbert plus the 140 for 180. People are really just gonna chase that 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 ZM performance. Again, it's possible this fig guy was just terrible, you know? Anyway, uh, moving on. Um getting getting near the end here. Uh, Paul Craig versus Andre Muniz. Um, Craig by submission is is the obvious way to play Craig, so we, we can't do that, and he's not winning the decision. So basically any of the Craig side is just you can't bet. Muniz by submission, that certainly makes a lot of sense. Uh, so we can't play that. So the only thing we can really do here is either Muni's by KO or Muni's by decision. What do you think is a better price? Muni's by decision or Muni's by KO? I would imagine Muni's by KO is going to be, be longer, but let's just take a look. All right. Muni's by KO is plus 400. Muni's by decision plus 330. So it is actually pretty close. Um, we're going to just play Muni's by decision here. Because I've heard a little bit too much about how Andre Muniz did a better job striking with with uh, Brandon Allen than people thought, so maybe there's a little bit of embedded bad value in Muniz by knockout. So we'll play Muniz by decision plus three thirty. Really think I'm going back and changing that plus nine hundred submission bet, but we'll we'll see. Um, Nathaniel Wood versus Andre Feely. Um, Okay, Nathaniel Wood is he's at home. Uh, he is, you know, he basically has Feely covered everywhere. Um, however, however, I can't really get a read of how people think Wood is going to win, you know, because in his last fight he went for the takedown round. Time before for that he went into the into the volume. Okay. But one thing I have not heard is how Andre Feely is going to win. Um, and uh, this line is <laughs> minus one ninety five. So we're 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 gonna we're gonna 
I don't know how we're going to get away with this, but we're going to actually play Andre Feely plus the 165. Now, this is this is literally atrocious. But we're going to do it because I haven't seen him picked and he's only plus 165. All right. Um, Molly McCann versus, oh, down in the last two. Molly McCann is in the co-main event. Because we live in a very, very, we, we live in a, in a great world. Um, so here's the, what you cannot play. You cannot play Julia Skolyarenko by submission because that's what everybody is just convinced is her only path to victory. Right. Um, what you could play is Julia Skolyarenko by any other method whether it be KO, which is probably not likely, or by decision. And, and the way that she would get her decision would be, I mean, this is impossible, right? She'd have to take, she'd have to go to the wrestling. So number one, she'd have to decide to go to the wrestling. Well, let's go back. To First of all, this has to not be a fixed fight, okay? Because they're giving Molly McCann co-main event. And... First of all, it's got to be a legit fight and that, that's not completely set up for her and Julia Renko, Stoli Renko is getting, being told to lose, right? So let's, let's presume that's not the case. Let's Now we also have to presume that Stoli Renko does not win by submission. Um, she has to go for the wrestling but not get the submission. And then the, the, the English judges or the British judges will have to give her a decision I think all of those things combined have no chance to win. So we are going to do it. We're going to play Stoli Renko by decision for 180. All right. So we're now at the last fight. And and I have to say that of, of the of the cards that I've predicted here, it since I've been doing this, this is probably the one we're going to lose the most. I mean, if you look at some of these bets, I mean, this is these have like no chance. Let's just start with Baris by decision. First of all, Filio, he just almost beat beat Mikhaev. and if Baris has any chance to win at all, it's going to be by by KO. So this is dead. Uh, Bruna Brazil, her loss is to what's her name to uh, Gomes completely been validated. So she is going. She's only plus one fifty. So us playing Shauna Bannon is basically throwing money in the, in the in the garbage. Chris Duncan, I don't think he's ever gotten a submission. So why are we playing him plus 900? Beats me. Penny Kian said only plus 130 against someone who has her covered everywhere, including huge size advantage. I mean, that's just a complete joke. Uh, Muradov, we don't know whether he's going to win round one or round two or maybe decision. But the one thing he's never going to do is rip, win in round three. So that's what we bet. Um you have the guy Parkin, who's being completely trained by Tom Aspinall in front of his home fans against the guy who everybody hates because he could barely beat uh, Josh Parisian. So if anything, if, if Poe could somehow get a win, it's certainly going to be by decision. So we're going to play him by inside the distance. Mark D. Casey has literally no path to victory at all because even if he goes for the takedowns, he's going to just get submitted. So we're going to bet him. And not only that, we're going to bet him by decision plus three fifty. Uh, Johnny Parsons by decision? Are you kidding me? I mean, if anything, he should win by KO. So him by decision, throwing money in the trash can. Daniel Marcos, uh, uh, I mean, he's a fraud, right? He's fought nothing but garbage cans. And you have Davy Grant, who's got that dog in him, in front of his home fans. I mean, this is a bad line. So we're going to take Daniel Marcos. And if that's not bad enough, we're going to play him to not take this to a decision, something he very rarely does. So uh, that's that money's dead. Lerone Murphy, total striker's delight. If anything, he's a lock win by decision. So we're going to play him in set distance. Or we, we've got to be out of our minds. Um, Farah ZM, the return of Farah ZM off of the big, big improvement. Um, we'll take Jai Herbert plus the 140. Andre Muniz, we don't know whether he's going to submit or maybe get that kind of sneaky, sharp KO. Well, we'll play him plus 330 by decision. Andre Feely against Nathaniel Wood in front of his home crowd, who has him covered everywhere. we got to be out of our minds plus 165. Julius Stolyarenko in a fixed fight against Molly McCann, okay, is going to not only survive, but she's actually going to win a decision somehow. I mean, I don't know in what world, but in the world that gives us plus 750. So we're 0 and 14. And now we have to get to this last fight. 
And we have Tom Aspinall versus Martin Tybor. So what we have to do is we have to bet something that's 15 to one or higher. Right? So let's take a look. If you want to play the Tom Aspinall side for openers, all right, to get 15 to one, you have to either have him win a decision or round four or five. I might try this, the Aspinall by decision. On the other hand, Marcin Tybura by decision plus 1,600. I mean, if Tybura, if they actually go to the decision, will they actually give it to Tybura? That's the question. So either of these guys by decision, you're saying, is plus 1,400? Well, why don't we just – no, that's not good enough. I was going to say fight goes to the distance, but we got to pick one, right? What's more likely, Aspinall by decision or Tybura by decision? Well, considering that Aspinall has never been out of the second round, we'll say that less people are betting that. So we'll say Tom Aspinall by decision, a very well-earned decision. For 180. So we're going to be betting all 15 of these for 2700. Are we really doing this? This one. All right. For Chris Duncan, for us to play him by submission, he's got to at least have one decision win, or one submission win in his life. All right. So how about that? So what we're going to do is I'm going to look at him up on the other side. Let's see, Duncan. You know, we have to go to fight odds to find this. Uh, Chris Duncan. KO, TKO, TKO. There it is. Here we go. There it is. Pietro Colonna, submission guillotine choke in 2018. He's going to relive that at plus 900. All right, that will do it. Uh, good luck, everybody. Should be a fun card.